Hello everyone, I'm Argama, and if you happen to not catch my subathon or don't follow me on Twitter, then you've probably missed my uh, big announcement. Um, so I'm going to read what I wrote on Twitter verbatim for you guys, so you have an idea because this will apply to you. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> as many of you know, I started uh, creating Let's Plays in January 2018 while working full-time in a very toxic place with terrible co-workers and a boss that encouraged harassment and bullying. A few months into it, I began self-teaching myself to create an avatar. By June, I had finished paying off all major bills with my job, including student loans, cars, and that kind of stuff, and I decided it was time for me to quit. I wanted to make content creating my full-time job. I wanted to be able to support myself with it, so I worked very hard. I tried my best and put all my energy into it. After my last job, I really needed a break from that kind of grind and I didn't think I could handle having a boss again. The job really took it out of me and when I left, I filed a five page report on the injustices of that job with the higher ups and things that I and other females had to deal with, including a manager that was biased. He would scream at me in front of the office because I'd ask a question about scheduling. The male bosses and the co-workers laughed jokingly when patrons said sexist things, uh, including jerking off to the females. It was a nightmare. Being a creative person, I really needed a creative outlet and a place where I could uh, both express myself and try new things. I leaned hard into what I was doing, learning to create and edit videos, learning to make my own model, and when I learned a of the tiny VTuber community, I did all I could to help support those around me. I considered most of them my friends, and they called me theirs as well. I tried promoting VTuber and my friends at anime conventions, which I worked part-time to supplement my income. I used to use my own money to help create merchandise for the small community. I even uh, special requests went out of the way for. I made artwork and tried to check in on people. I made models and so on. When the community grew a bit, there were troubled people and I tried to create a place where we could share information and be informed without just relying on grapevining. I used to reach out to do collabs to dozens and dozens of VTubers, from those that no longer exist to those that are quite huge now. I wanted all of us to succeed, and I was still working through uh, issues of my last job and was often exhausted being in public, especially when I was struggling, and people would just tell me to use my magic, uh, just you know, magic my problems away, and it felt like I had to be on all the time. The the thing was I never tried to play a character, or Gamma Witch was my artist name before being a VTuber. I only made the avatar a witch because of my name. I didn't try to put on a fake persona for people. When I streamed and made videos, it was me, who I am. I know my personality can be a bit abrasive and I often come off straightforward. This tends to put people off. I also tend to have trust issues due to past betrayals and traumas, along with abandonment issues. Over my time as a VTuber, I tried to keep up with trends. I taught myself V-Roid and some Unity to help out here and there. I put my knowledge on YouTube. At first it was help to clients, but then others liked it and wanted more, so I did my best. I still streamed and tried to make videos. I had people in the community come to me with things they needed help with. I tried my best. I was being worn out. And all of this work wasn't really showing the result as far as growth. Eventually my YouTube attained some growth with Vroid, but it was limited and was an enjoyable content to make. I continued with it though. So I did all that I could. Almost every waking moment I was working on something for my VTuber career was whether it be models or updated layouts, new content streamings, commissions. Um, I kept trying and trying. My growth was pretty stagnant. I had people who knew me because of my videos but never really supported me. They never subbed to my YouTube, they never watched my Twitch. There were a few people who started bringing up bullshit about me, writing hate pieces that made my friends slowly stop talking to me. Not all, but many. The odd thing was, I had no idea, no one had said anything. And that person I had considered my friend, I even went out of my way to send them a special care package of a custom keychain that I tore apart one of my pendants so they could have it as a necklace. I'd always cared about my friends, and even if I was jealous of them, it didn't mean I didn't want them to succeed. I just also wanted to succeed. But there were a lot of friends that used me for clout, or 
they thought I had clout and when they realized I was pretty much a nobody, they treated me as such. I'd gone out of my way to help a lot of people because they said they were friends and then they stopped. And when there were quite a few people I only had a good relationship with suddenly started blocking me. I felt like I was doing something wrong, but I didn't know what. I'm human. I've made mistakes. I never purposely went out to harm anyone or their reputation. And when I talk about incidences, I often leave names out, so it's more of a blind venting. I was starting to have my abandonment insecurities come to feel real. In my years as a VTuber, I've held dozens of collabs and charities and invited dozens of VTubers to them. And I can count on one hand in almost my four years of being a VTuber who has invited me into a collab. And it hurts pretty bad, you know? I still tried my best. I pushed through and I kept trying. In 2021, it was the worst year for me. I started with a crisis of purpose, which was quickly overtaken by grief from the loss of my mother, followed by the toxicity of my biological family. During that time, a particular VTuber was spreading lies about me, saying I was doxing or feared, feared I'd dox people, how it was making them stressed out. Uh, ironically, I didn't really think of them, ever. They weren't on my radar. I don't have their address, and if I ever did, or if they bought something from me, I wouldn't know who was who, nor would I keep a list of everyone who has bought and stuff from me. I have made over 1,800 sales on Etsy, and I do not keep a secret file of all those sales. That's just dumb and illogical. However, that VTuber, they were telling lies to a person who took into writing more hate about me online, and it really hurt because it wasn't true. Uh, even when the VTuber contacted me, they tried to blame it all on the other person, saying it was their doing and they did no wrong, except they must not have realized that that other person had posted a screenshot of them saying such to them. Because when I showed it to them in their reply, it was just sort of like an oops, my bad, sorry. It was a very stressful year. My family bullshit went through the roof, and by the time autumn had come around, I needed a break. I was assured by the people in my community that they would understand and they would wait for me. That they cared and they wanted my mental health to be in a better spot. And I believed them and my small fan base that I busted my ass for. I really didn't want to lose it. Losing a family member when you're bad at dealing with death is really hard. Realizing they treated you like shit, both physically and mentally, and you normalized it, and now you're struggling with the guilt of disliking them, but are also sad that they're gone and not able to confront them about it is the fucking worst. I had to cut ties with my whole family because they did nothing but use me. If they needed something, I was called on because I was responsible. And this goes back to my abandonment issues. Because if I wasn't being useful, they would abandon, abandon me, and I felt the same that my VTuber friends were doing. I decided to give the benefit of the doubt, and I worked on rebranding and pouring my heart and soul into it, and I came back expecting the audience that promised that they would still be there for me, but they weren't. Everything I built was practically gone. My average of 40 to 50 viewers were now back in the teens. No matter what I do or what I tried, it was just gone. I tried to continue. I thought of quitting on my four year and I told myself I would wait after, till after my subathon to see how I did, to see if it would help raise my numbers back on Twitch to where they were, and if that was the case, I would keep going and rebuild from there. However, as I mentioned on Twitter, I have been dealing with some medical issues, cardio tests, neuro neurological tests for uh, smell hallucinations, and still trying to work through my traumas and deal with things. So what I sort of mentioned, but really only a few people knew, was the neuro uh, neurologist put me on anti-seizure or anti-epilepsy medication. It, however, had a really bad side effect. The first day, it made my depression worse by tenfold. The whole day I was in distraught and crying. I was very thankful to two particular people, and they know who they are, who talked me through that day. The medication made me suicidal. I had begun making preparations to take my life the following day. I had made sure my discord was covered and that my husband would be okay, and I reached out to a few people letting them know I cared and valued them. I didn't realize it was the medication at that point. But I talked with these two people about everything on my mind, and I would say about 90% about it was how I felt betrayed by the community, and how I felt 
they only used me or whatever. How they said they were my friends, but they would never invite me into games with them. They never invited me into their VTuber groups or into their secret Discord servers. They rarely or never DM'd me unless I DM'd them first. And when I realized it was the drugs, I did stop taking the drugs. Uh, but the feeling sort of lingered. Not the suicidal part, the feeling betrayed. This overwhelming feeling of being used or ignored or abandoned, being isolated or whatever, and most of all, even if it wasn't them, it just felt like there was no growth for me as a VTuber. I didn't fake who I was, and it made it hard for me to hold an audience. I would sometimes be happy and sometimes sad and sometimes frustrated. I realized I put too much of myself and from time to time effort into something that I was failing in. It feels like shit when you realize that you're a failure at something you want so bad. So regardless of the success of the subathon, I was still planning on quitting on my four years. Now I say quitting and I mean that as a professional or whatever I was trying to be, I may or may not still stream. If I do, I will probably still use my avatar. I like my avatar. It won't be a hobby so much, but more like, you know, if you see a recipe and you're like, oh man, I want to try cooking that one day. And so eventually one day comes around and you do, and you just try it. It's not something you do often, maybe once in a while. And yeah, whenever the spirit moves you, it doesn't mean you're really a hobbyist and it's not a profession. It's just something different to do here and there and that's what streaming will be for me maybe if I'm feeling lonely I'll pop in while doing just work or chatting maybe I'll game with a friend I don't know we'll see what happens um, but as far as it comes to my YouTube channel chances are I'm not gonna be uploading anything new for a while and um, yeah I figured I wanted to let you know I do have a project in mind my next project, which I've been putting some thought into for the past few months, is something I've been, something I'll be doing with my husband, and it's we're looking to make a video game together. Uh, it means I'll need to study up on some programming language, and I'll also be practicing like more of my sprite artwork. <laughs> um, I'm still sort of debating if I want to do sprite or hand drawn, but I think this, I think I like sprite work. It's kind of the pixel art is very cute and charming. Um, uh, anyways, so that was the announcement I had. It's kind of emotional for me because it's me admitting I failed and almost feels like I've wasted four years. And I know you guys appreciated that I've made tutorials and stuff and that it's helped you out, um, which is great. But for me, that wasn't my goal. Um being a VTuber. My goal of being a VTuber was to have some sort of success and I don't feel I got there. I set very specific goals for myself and I wasn't able to reach them. And it is a bit hard to see people who um, you've helped reach those goals and then once they do, they don't look back. They don't look at you. They don't help you. They don't try to support you in any way. They're just like, oh yeah, that, yeah, that's that's right. That was a thing. And then that's it. That's gone. It's, it's sometimes difficult, you know? I do want to say, though, it's not all... Like, not all my friends are bad. Like, I did make some really good friends, and I consider them actual friends. People that don't judge me when I vent. And they don't make me feel bad for having feelings. But they just let me get out of my system without being an echo chamber. Because I don't need an echo chamber. My head's its own echo chamber. <laughs> uh, for them, I really appreciate you guys so much. And I consider you like my family. I wish I had. I also really appreciate the fans that stuck with me and those that actually enjoyed my content and just didn't hang around waiting for something from me. So, yep, yeah, I'm going to continue on uh, streaming until uh, my four-year anniversary, which is June 20th, and I might simul-stream that last... <laughs> my... my... graduation <laughs> stream? I don't know. But if you guys are interested, I'll see you then. Um, that's it for this. Alright, bye.